Bored. Study eyes from random characters. What anime is that last one from? Gravity Falls. I'm thinking about that time when I was at the town and saw this really really pretty dog, Shiba or Akata, or something similar. There was this tiny child, under 5 I guess, and his mom, and with her permission the kid walked up to the dog's owner and asked if he can pet the dog. The owner was like, alright, but be gentle, so the kid approached the dog. The dog jumped back a bit and made an annoyed boof. Not a proper bark, just a quick warning sound. Pretty much the closest possible thing you can hear to a dog saying bruh. And the kid looked at his mom and said, he said no, and started to wander off, like kids do. New idea, if a guy responds to public breastfeeding with so, why can't I pull out my pee pee and ejaculate? Ask him if he intends to feed his sperm to children and watch the conversation get real uncomfortable real fast as the whole scrambles to compare an actual sexual organ to fatty tissue that contains nutritious milk. Even better, just loudly exclaim, you feed your sperm to children and watch everyone else react. Till the Bible contains a passage where it says it became dark in daytime during the crucifixion of Jesus. It was discovered a total eclipse did actually occur in Jerusalem on the 24th of November 29 sent at around 11 am. This fact got dismissed by the church because the date is not in accordance with Easter. Historians. We found out the actual date Jesus was crucified. Catholic Church. How dare you question our appropriation of pagan holidays. Okay, but could you imagine being a Roman, mailing up some dude who's like, I'm the son of God. Bruh, and then the fucking sun goes black. Ij. A school in Russian prison. It's nice they let her keep teaching. Broke. Using boys will be boys to defend abusive and predatory behavior. Woke. Using boys will be boys to describe boys and men doing jackass style stuff for fun. Of course he's teasing her. Boys will be boys. But, hate that. We got bored, so we decided to tie Roman candle to a drone and have it chase us. Outstandingly good. I'll be like 40 with no kids, and people will say, or, oh, I'm so sorry for you, and I'll be like, how was the fucking Wiggles reunion tour hall I went to Italy last week for fun, and didn't have to hire a sitter. This is a very sad mentality. To think oneself more important than that of progeny is the sign of a failed human life. So the Wiggles concert wasn't as good as you thought it would be, huh? Do flat earthers think earth still moves in space like some sort of planet sized frisbee? This is my new religion. God made the frisbee earth and then just tossed us into the abyss. The world ends when his dog catches it. As cosmogonies go, I've seen worse. Two great, but opposed, celestial forces, God, who created the world, and Og, who will end it. I worked with toddlers and preschoolers for 3 years. Sometimes I accidentally slip and tell a friend to say bye to an inanimate object, say bye bus, and occasionally they unthinkingly just do it. I'm glad there's a teacher version of accidentally called teacher mom. When I worked at medieval times, occasionally I would slip in real life and call people my lord. A moose raised from baby and used by this Canadian in his logging business. The moose leaves for a few weeks in the spring, but always returns. You can try and make fun of Canada all you want, but we know you're only doing it out of jealousy. Because Canada is awesome. I can't believe that both Voldemort and Palpatine canonically f***ed. Just to clarify, they did not f each other. That would genuinely be terrifying. Let JK Rowling be the judge of that. Do not let JK Rowling be the judge of that. You're a regular office worker, born with the ability to see how dangerous a person is with a number scale of 1 to 10 above their heads. A toddler would be a 1, while a skilled soldier with a firearm may score a 7. Today, you notice the reserve new guy at the office measures a 10. You decide it's best to find out what you can about this person. Cautiously, you approach his desk. He's a handsome man, tall, but with a disarming smile. How could such a friendly guy, with such cute, dorky glasses be dangerous? You extend your hand. 
I noticed you're new here. What's your name? He shakes your hand warmly. His gaze is piercing, as if he's looking right through you. The name's Clark, he says. So, how long have you worked for the Daily Planet? This one wins. It's been a few weeks, and one of Clark's friends shows up. She's pretty and all, enough muscle, that she must work out. First thought would be, that she should be maybe a 6. Clark's introducing her around. This is my good friend, Diana, she's in from out of town. You blink, and take a step back in fear, you've never seen an 11 before. The day Bruce Wayne shows up for his long promised interview with Lois Lane, you can't help it, the mug you're holding drops from your fingers, and sends a shock of hot coffee and ceramic shards across the floor. Clark stops a few feet away, and squints at you worriedly from behind those ridiculous glasses you're 99% sure he doesn't actually need, and asks tentatively, everything alright? You ignore him in favor of staring at the inky dark numerals, hovering over the beaming fool gesticulating some fantastic yacht story for a gaggle of secretaries and minor columnists. That's it. Your gift has officially gone haywire. There is no other explanation. Because there is absolutely no way that Brucey e. Wayne is a 10. At this point, you've seen it all. Mild manner reporters and billionaires at a 10, and a model like woman at 11. You are really starting to doubt your power. The day you really stopped believing in it was when Bruce Wayne came for another visit, and this time with a kid. The kid couldn't be more than 10 years old, a bit on the short side. He was an 8. The day you started believing in it again was when you saw on TV the formation of something called the Justice League. There were those same numbers over Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman and Robin. That's when you put two and two together. You wonder how nobody at the Daily Planet noticed that Clark was Superman with glasses. You wonder why you didn't notice. You wonder why nobody put two and two together that Diana Prince and Wonder Woman looked exactly the same. You look in the mirror as the realization hit you and you see your own number change from a 3 to a 9. I don't think I've ever actually reblogged this magnificent post and that's shame. I live here. Why do I know what this smells like? I can leave the door open while I'm cleaning my bathroom. I reason to myself, surely my beloved cat, Meat Bale, isn't dumb enough to try and jump into an open toilet full of Clorox. I caught this tiny little fool mid fucking air. I watched him start leaping and time literally slowed down. And then he had the audacity, the nerve, to beep indignantly at me for ruining his plans. His name is what? His name is Meatball. Yesterday my friend told me that a man cut her off in traffic, so she laid on the horn, and he threatened to kill her. She said, you think you're the one who gets to kill me? I'm fucking crazy. I'll eat your fucking girlfriend, you piece of sh**, and hurled a lemonade at him. Sorry to get serious on this post, but this is an actual strategy I was taught in self-defense. Hell shriek the wildest threats you can think of. My favorite is come here, I'm gonna suck your eyeballs out of your fucking skull. It startles the f out of these jackasses, when a someone, ESP a lady someone, just rolls intimidation right back at them. Same sex marriage isn't gay privilege, it's equal rights. Privilege would be something like gay people not paying taxes. Like churches don't. Shots fired. Rockets launched. If you ever think you have a bad habit of writing yourself into a corner, just remember, after it conning the minions from being mad science creations from Gru's lab, to being immortal beings from the dawn of time, who are driven to obey the world's most evil monsters, the writers of the Despicable Me franchise were forced to come up with a reason why the minions wouldn't have served Hitler. Like, there's an explicit plot point explaining this. Please, tell me how they explain this. They spend 150 years in exile in the Arctic as self-imposed penance for accidentally shooting Napoleon with a cannon and consequently missed both world wars. TFW you are at Taco Bell and you grab the wrong size lid for your drink and you don't want to throw it away because that's wasteful and just adds more plastic into the world's landfills but you can't put it back because you don't want to spread germs and how would you feel if someone did that to you? 
plus no one is vaccinated anymore, so who knows you might end up killing some small child, but throwing the lead away is basically on par with killing thousands, as you do nothing to fight global warming. I mean, what are you doing in Taco Bell anyways? Don't you care about the environment? Don't you care about your own health? You should be drinking water from a glass that was washed with earth-friendly soap. Why can't our government get anything right ever? It's all money and power. Corrupt money and power. Money should be abolished. We should have global communism. Would that mean no more Taco Bell though? Is this what overthinking is like? Seeing as how I spent the rest of the day with a Taco Bell lid in my hoodie pocket, I think I can answer, yes. My only talent is breathing. I said this to my mom, and she just said you have asthma, moron. Hero. Is that the best you can do? Villain. Choking back tears. Uh, yeah. I'm actually trying really hard here man. Hero. Now looking uncomfortable. Oh. Hero. Hey man. It's okay. That was good. You are- You did good back there. Villain. I did good. Hero. I mean bad. You did bad. Holy sh- I have the best idea. My line of logic was, well, if I put the sponge in the blender, when I turn it on, the sponge will spin around and scrub the blender for me, so I don't have to spend ages cleaning it. That's not what happened though. One of my favorite tidbits about Oblivion is that, when Bethesda brought Patrick Stewart in to play Uriel Septim, they gave him this big 90 page booklet, detailing the character's history and background and motivations, and they were really worried that they'd gone overboard and given him too much. Meanwhile, Stewart was delighted, he said that it was the best character prep he'd ever been given, and he wished more people would do that. It's worth noting that this character dies in the tutorial. Minecraft. Seth of man. Are you two politely acknowledging each other in a hallway? Why do Americans freak out over us Canadians having bagged milk? Who the f bags milk? Who the f brings guns into Walmart? Yeah, that's fair. My host mom in Japan referred to her Roomba as Roomba-san, and when it would get stuck, she would just look over it and softly say, Ganbat, Roomba Sam, Ganbat, as it made distress beeping noises at her. Ganbat, cheer up, be courageous, do your best. Centaurs are cool in theory, but would be so fucking creepy if they were real. Hey, do you think that centaurs would have human or horse intelligence and awareness? Human intelligence with horse instincts. Human brain. I'm an intelligent being. Horse brain. Gets surprised by a bird and runs for a mile. So, we've tried explaining vaccines using science and that scared people. But what if, instead, we told them that vaccines actually contain magic rocks or healing energy. We left this rabies vaccine in the light of a full moon to cleanse it so it's safe. Everyone knows about the link between rabies and full moons. Vaccination is an ancient practice, going back at least hundreds of years, that draws on your body's natural healing abilities to let you fight disease naturally. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who had practiced one kick 10,000 times. Bruce Lee, Harry Potter, the boy who dared to ask, why study all these other spells if I can get really good at eating everyone's ones out of their hands? Thank you.